Welcome back to Daily Sews and Stuff. I'm coming to you today with another pattern review. I know, <laughs> two in one month and neither one of them were truly planned out ahead of time and I've never done a pattern review before and I said I'd only be bringing you one video a month. I'm breaking all of the rules. <laughs> but I really wanted to bring this to you. So this is the Lotus Blossom Top by Love Notions and I wanna wax poetic about Love Notions for just a second. I absolutely love their patterns. My favorite part is they come with a full bust option. Ah, oh, it is amazing. If you are a sewist like me who has more than a four inch difference between your upper bust measurement and your full bust measurement, then you likely have had problems with patterns fitting before and you may or may not know that a full bust adjustment is what you need in order to make patterns fit you. And you also may or may not know that it can be a little bit of a complicated adjustment to do. So Love Notions, on both their knit and woven patterns, does that work for you. And it is amazing. It's so wonderful. They do that work for you. If you have a standard bust, totally fine, they have a pattern piece for you. And if you have a full bust, totally fine, they have a pattern piece for you. And it makes the whole process so much easier. You still may need to do other adjustments, you know, shorten the length, lengthen the length, whatever. But what is usually the most daunting adjustment is already done for you. I really love the styling of most Love Notions patterns and they have a great mix of woven and knit patterns. Because I love Love Notions patterns so much, I applied to be a tester for them and now I test patterns for Love Notions and help make sure those patterns are perfect before they come out to the public. And I love being part of the Love Notions testers team. So this month, there's actually two patterns in testing, but the one that I uh, applied to help with and was chosen to help with is this Lodum Blossom top. Now this is not a new pattern for Love Notions, they are just redoing it in order to extend the sizing and make sure they have awesome projector files for it. And you know, my channel, we kind of focus on the projectors. This does have a really nice projector file. I find that most Love Notions patterns have amazing projector files. In fact, all the ones that I've tried have them. And what's really great about Love Notions is the designers themselves actually use a projector. So they're not guessing what we might need. They're actually putting it into practice and using it themselves. And they know what works well for a projector. And it's just perfect. So this Lotus Blossom top, if, as you can see, has a bit of a twist to it. And it also, my version at least, has an inset in the back. I really love this top. Uh, this is my second version. The first version you'll see in white in some pictures. And I had the added privilege of getting the little girls pattern to make for my little girls. And so you'll see some pictures with all of us. For most people, cutting out the front bodice of this shirt is going to be cutting out a pattern piece that is larger than your projected area. Might be bigger than your projection, might be bigger than your cutting mat, but how do you deal with this? How do you move both the pattern and your fabric in such a way that you can cut an accurate piece when it doesn't all fit at once? So when I went to cut the second version of this, this black one you're seeing right now, I decided that I would record an Instagram reel for that. I've already done this on YouTube before, you can see it right here. I thought I would just make an Instagram reel and vertically recorded that cutting process. Then we were asked if any of us would make matching versions for our daughters. And I have two little girls who love to match mama. So I volunteered and was able to do that. And I got the bright idea at this point to go ahead and record all the parts that you might find a little bit tricky when making this top. So then I had a lot of vertically recorded video that I really didn't want to try to condense down into one minute chunks. So I'm bringing to you this video where I will have some of the pieces in vertical and some of the pieces in horizontal and I am very sorry for my poor planning when it came to making this video. However, I think that the information will still be helpful for you. I think that you will be able to see how to cut this pattern, especially the version for the adults. If you are cutting for a little girl, you may or may not be able to fit the whole front bodice on your cutting area. 
and how to set in the inset in the back. That can be a little bit tricky because the curves don't match um, because you're sewing a convex curve to a concave curve, right? And so when you flip it wrong sides, they're facing the wrong direction, it feels like. I learned how to do this when I was learning how to quilt and doing curves with quilting and it's a lot easier whenever the fabric stretches when you have a knit, but I'll, I'll show you some tricks to get that done. And then the part that a lot of people find tricky and I did not find tricky at all the first time I sewed this shirt and then the second time I sewed this shirt, I was completely confused and so frustrated and took me forever to get it right. And I don't understand why I did it right the first time and then lost it completely. But the third and fourth time I did a little bit better and I recorded this for you so that you can see how to do the twist. The main thing with doing the twist is just to get it straight in your head before you take any permanent steps. One tricky bit that I'm not going to mention later is that this shirt has to have the front side of the fabric and the back side of the fabric match. So you want to be careful which fabric you choose to do this. If you need to do a print or don't quite have a long enough piece to make it work, you can piece them together at the bottom. That was not a choice that I made on any of the shirts that I created. So I don't know how to walk you through that, but there are instructions in the tutorial for that. This is a modal spandex from Serge Fabric Shop. I will put that in the description box. The white version is a Walmart mystery fabric that I bought a long time ago. The lace on the white one and the mesh on this black one are both from Serge Fabric Shop. Again, a link to that shop will be in the description box. And with modal, sometimes there's a tiny bit of a shine difference, but I think it's close enough that it works out for this shirt because you will see as we do this, Basically, this is the right side and this is the wrong side of my fabric. That might be backwards, but that's the point. You want a fabric where you can't quite figure out which side is right and which side is wrong, especially at a quick glance. That also means that it made the recording of this a little bit more difficult and might make it a little bit more difficult for you to see what I'm doing. In the pattern tutorial, they use a one-sided fabric specifically to show you the difference as you go through and that was a brilliant idea on Love Notions part. Whichever fabric you choose, you want to make sure that it has a, some good drape to it so that this drapey knot doesn't become an awkward tent. You also want it to be drapey enough to, to get the dolman sleeve correct. I do love sewing a dolman sleeve. You cut the sleeve on, it's so quick and easy to sew and you don't even have to hem it with this sleeve band which the little girl's version comes with a hem sleeve and I did hack it just a tiny bit to make sleeve bands. All I did was cut the sleeves a tiny bit shorter, created sleeve bands by measuring the sleeve opening and cutting a strip of fabric just a tiny bit shorter than what the sleeve opening would be and about two inches wide tall so that when it was folded up and sewn on, it would be a little bit less than an inch. As I said, I originally recorded this for Instagram. So some of it is in a vertical orientation and then some of it is in the horizontal orientation. In addition, I tend to be a lot more casual on Instagram and I don't usually mic up and I don't usually worry about the fact that my kids are being loud in the background. So this video is definitely going to be different than most of the YouTube videos I put out. I believe you'll still get value out of it. I think that I have accurately shown the steps, but it will definitely not be as polished as you are used to and even that I know is not as polished as many makers out there. In addition, I do switch between shirts because some of the steps were recorded with the adult size, some of them were recorded with the two different kid sizes. So it all makes sense in the end, but know that the size of the shirt may change as you go through the video. So come along on this mostly vertical but sometimes horizontal journey with me. Learn how to make yourself a lotus blossom top uh, especially cutting it with your projector and all the little tricky bits and I know you will love the result. It's really flattering and a lot of fun. This is the Love Notions Lotus Top and it has this really cool flippy floppy front piece um, but it's very very long and it is longer than my mat is. So the first thing I do is I maximize where I can cut. And I'm going to make sure that both sides of my pattern, if it can, 
is is on my mat and as far as I can down to the edge. I also want to make sure I have something like this giant line in the middle to give me a really nice reference point. We're going to try to use three reference points. Two will work, three is better. So now I need to lay down my fabric. So I had to stop here so that I could um, pile up my fabric on the edge here and not have it drift off. I am using the lines on my mat to help me line up. And I have sheet metal underneath here. Um, I don't wanna pick it up, but that's letting the magnets um, hold my fabric in place. So before I start cutting, what I wanna do is mark it. And most of the time what I do is I mark it with a friction pen and it's great. But what is not gonna work well right now is marking it with a friction pen, even if I go with like orange or red or something, because this is black fabric. So I'm gonna use this. This is Post-it brand, um, like Post-it tape. And it's all one sticker that you can write on easily. And I'm just going to give myself a sticker in a few places. It'll be easier to write on. And then I'll give myself kind of a target area on that sticker. I think it'll make sense once I show you. Now I am going to be cutting through this. Um, so I'm okay with that because it's just going to be these four little spots. But if that freaks you out with your rotary cutter, then by all means, scoot it in a little bit so that doesn't happen. So there's this big line going straight across here that I've traced over the top of my tape. I'm gonna cut this line and that angle gives me a clue as well as this line. Love Notions puts um, letters along the line every so often. So I went ahead and marked that L right there. I think that will be helpful. Here there's a notch that will be helpful. And here I did the same. I marked the line that goes across and I'm gonna cut the side. So I'm gonna cut everything that I can um, up to about where these, this magnet set is in that, um, I may not get quite all the way to this, but that's okay. Even if I don't quite cut it, it'll be here as a marker. So you can see I've cut as much as I can. And now I'm gonna have to do things. If you don't have good spots to mark, um, like I did, you can create them for yourselves with the comment tools on Adobe. Um, you just wanna make sure that it, there's at least two, three, even four is better. And you wanna make them on the side where you're gonna shift. Because if I make a mark over here, like if I had marked this notch, which I need to mark, you know, for sewing, but if I had marked this notch as a reference in a minute, I'm not gonna be able to see this because it's gonna be shifted all the way off here. Does that make sense? So I shoved my fabric out of the way a little bit to show you. So I shift the pattern first because I wanna make sure that I, within the bounds on either end here and that I have got the end of it within my, my screen, my cutting area. And I wanna make sure I can see plenty of my reference points. So I've shift, I, all I did was use the mouse and just the little hand tool and drag it over. Now I'm gonna put the fabric lined up with it. So I started by lining up my markers and I just put, I normally would put the magnet on top of there, but I moved it off so y'all could see. And um, so I magneted right there, all four of my markers. So those are, those are right where they're supposed to be. And I know those are correct. And then I smoothed the rest of my fabric out and placed my magnets to cut the rest of this. So now I'm gonna just grab my rotary cutter and continue cutting. I did wanna note that just the way I had pulled it on the other end, and I kept it pulled, I pulled it on this end, pulled it so that it wasn't stretching the fabric out and pulling it as I was cutting. So now I have the whole thing cut and it was big and it didn't fit all, my, all in my projection at once, but it is done. So I removed my stickers. I've just got clips marking these two points that needed to be marked and I'm ready to sew this up as if it was just a normal piece. After cutting, the next tricky part might be putting this it back inset onto the back bodice. So the problem is you're, they fit together like this, right? But you have to flip it like this to sew. And all of a sudden now these curves don't line up. So you're gonna match at the center and give yourself a clip and then you'll turn and pin it at the top and pin it at the top then give yourself some in between. It'll end up looking 
like this. Now this looks like a hot mess. And when you kind of try to pull it, it starts to try to flip over because it knows that's the way it goes. But if you see, I've got lots of clips and a pin here. I'm gonna run this through my serger and then it'll end up looking like this after I cover stitch it over the top. Now that it's sewn, I'm just gonna top stitch it down because I don't want it flipping up like this. I don't think that's very pretty. I think that if I top stitch it so that my seam allowance stays down at the shirt, that'll be prettier like I did with my adult size. So I'm gonna cover stitch over the top right here. Zigzag, triple sec, step, zigzag, lightning bolt stitch, all those things could work for the same thing. Once you've got the inset done, you fold up the hem and hem that. Got my back bodice ready to go. Okay, now the goal is to get this twist in the front and there's a seam down the middle. So we're done with the back for now until we're ready to attach it to the front. We're gonna be working on the front. We're gonna use a little bit of interfacing here at the top of the front neckline and um, we're gonna do the twist. This, this is all laid out right sides up. That's just pooled in the middle. This is all the same side of the fabric showing up. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press this half an inch where I'm told I'm supposed to, and I'm going to clip the interfacing where I'm supposed to put it and do the same on the other side. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the twist and like check that everything is okay before I move on. Okay, I'm gonna show you the twist and I just have clips here to hold it down and I've got clips here at these two notch points. And I need the right side to right side. And this is my right side. This is where my neck comes to a V. This is the notch. This is the notch that this notch needs to match to. So I'm gonna grab over here. I'm gonna come up, over, around. Lay this down where the neck band matches, the arm matches, and this front seam matches, including the notches. Everything is correct. And I'm double checking that yes, this is gonna be the right side of this. So yes, I need the interfacing on this side and I need it folded under that way. And this is gonna be the right side of this one. So yes, I need it folded this way and interfacing here. Okay, so I'm just like dry fitting it a little bit before I go any further. So now I can press this uh, piece of interfacing where it's supposed to go, this piece where it's supposed to go, press the neckline in the way I'm supposed to. Okay, so now my interfacing is enclosed in my folded over hem. That's not pressed yet, it's just folded. Okay, now we're going to do the twist again and baste it. Now I'm going to, with a straight stitch only and a big old stitch, baste from here to where these notches are. I'll clip it a little bit first and double check that I've done it right before I move on. So I've got it basted together. We're gonna unfold it and see. And we should have a front bodice. Where's the, it's really hard to see where the end is because the inside and outside are the same color. All right, there we go. Also gonna need to sew this more permanently. Uh, the instructions say to do it with a straight stitch and then press it open. Um, I'm gonna do it with a serger because I would rather it be a strong serger stitch um, and not worry about this tiny little bit of extra fullness. That's a personal preference thing. This front bodice is pretty much done. We are going to now match it to the back bodice. Right sides together, of course. And so the side seam, the shoulder, the shoulder, the side seam. This is a shot of my finished shirt, but let me just go through and tell you the last finishing steps. Once you've got the front and back attached, you will then need to hem 
the neckline. I just did it quickly with my cover stitch. My cover stitch did not like the mesh in the back. So if you want, you may want to hack putting a neckband on it or just model through the way I did. It may also work better with maybe a triple step zigzag. And then if you have hacked it like I have for the children's version or you are sewing the adult version, you just put your sleeve bands on and your sleeves are done. If you have not hacked it, then you would simply turn that other under and hem it and then you'll be done. And there is your finished Lotus Blossom shirt. If you are watching this video the very day that it comes out, then this Lotus Blossom top will be the $5 feature pattern for Love Notions. And you'll be able to get it for, yes indeed, $5. If you watch this video later, no worries, you can get it. It's still a great value. And if you use my affiliate link you can find in the description box, I get just a tiny bit of that purchase price, but it doesn't cost you any extra. I'll also make sure that I list the Legato jeans and the course that you can take to help you sew the Legato jeans. That's what I was wearing on the bottom in all of my pictures. In the future, I plan to hack those to have a bootcut version, but I have not done that yet. I really appreciate you guys supporting the channel in that way, and I really appreciate you supporting by liking, commenting, sharing this video. If you are st here for the projector content, I promise next month I've already got the video recorded, edited, posted, it's just waiting to come out. There will be a very projector-centric video happening. Thanks for watching with me, friends. I'll see you next time. Bye. Keep watching my videos. Like, subscribe, and comment.